March in the Pacific Northwest, you might be lucky to find this enchanting member of the Araceae plant family, the Chiquiton Americanus, Lysichiton Americanus, Western Skunk Cabbage, Yellow Skunk Cabbage, or Swamp Lantern, Cousins, Eastern Skunk Cabbage, Simplocarpus fetidus in Eastern North America. On the other side of the Bering Strait, there is the beautiful Lysichiton Kamchakensis, Asian scum cabbage, white scum cabbage, far eastern swamp lantern, or Japanese swamp lantern. The name skunk cabbage refers to the odor that it blooms release. The odor attracts pollinators, scavenging flies and beetles, the very few pollinators that are already active very early in the season when species of this genus Lysochiton are in bloom. Comparative to other members of the Araceae plant family, this species is not all that skunky. Probably their very bright yellow blooms can attract the early pollinators seeking blooms early in season without the strong smell other members of the family produce. Araceae plant family species have a characteristic type of inflorescence with small, densely packed flowers in a spadix, a spike-like inflorescence, usually enveloped in a large spathe on a long stalk. One of the first blooms in late winter or early spring, the species adapted to attract pollinators with these lantern-like spathe and odor, a food promise. After pollination and fertilization, the very attracted yellow spathe will fall off, and the name of the genus, Lysichiton, translates from Greek in losing its cloak. While the bright yellow spathe attracts pollinators to the small flowers on the spadix, losing the spathe will make the developing fruits less conspicuous. Their very large leaves will remain an intriguing feature. Their leaves are some of the largest simple undivided leaves of plants native to this region, collecting energy to be stored in their large rhizomes to be used for next year's bright blooms early in the season. Native to the Pacific Northwest, extending south to Northern California and east to Idaho and Montana, because it's such an unusual and attractive perennial that grows easily on marshy areas, it was introduced in the UK early 20th century. It escaped cultivation and naturalized in marshy areas of Britain and Ireland, and it is now classified as an invasive species by the European Union. Like many members of the racy plant family, it contains calcium oxalate crystals that cause prickling sensation to tongue and throat when ingested, followed by intestinal irritation and worse. Still, deer and other herbivores may occasionally browse their leaves, while American black bears will eat its rhizomes as a laxative after emerging from hibernation. Local people used its leaves and large rhizomes as food in time of scarcity, after neutralizing the calcium oxalate by roasting or boiling. An even more common use of its large waxy leaves was to line berry baskets or wrap around salmon or other food when baked. The leaves also served as medicated bandage to address sores, swelling, and other skin conditions. I still remember the first time I met this species, March 2000, in a very green Ho rainforest, the Hall of Mosses an amazing apparition that I did not expect in the northern side of the temperate climate. A great plant to encourage on your own marshy area if you live in the regions where it is native to. Besides beautiful blooms and leaves, its roots and rhizomes help prevent soil erosion. And together with other native plants, it will contribute to a healthy planet for a healthy humanity. Western skunk cabbage, yellow skunk cabbage, swamp lantern, Lysichiton americanus.